Many organizations have either migrated to the cloud or are in the process of migrating to the cloud and are wondering how they operate in this new environment. How do they manage in this new environment? They still have their on-premises data center. They have one or more cloud providers. So what is the right cloud operations model? Do they keep the existing team? Do they expand the existing team? Do they have a separate team altogether? Or do they outsource to a managed services provider of some sort? Today, we're going to unpack all of that. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Elias Kineser, and today we're going to answer the question, which cloud operations model should you use? But before we do that, do me a huge favor. 50% of you that are watching my videos haven't subscribed to the channel yet. It would be a huge favor if you would subscribe to this channel right now, especially if you like this content, it will significantly help me grow this channel. It'll satisfy the YouTube algorithm. So like, share, comment, I'd love to hear from you. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this always comes down to cloud maturity. Depending on your cloud maturity, one or more of these cloud operations model will fit your needs best. Now, what I will say here is the choice that you make today will vary significantly than the choice you might choose to adopt later, again, based on your cloud maturity. So if you're still in the early stages and if you've decided that you're doing maybe a lift and shift, then your cloud operations model will be one versus if you're more mature, you've been doing this for, for many years, you've standardized on, standardized on past services, and maybe you're using cloud native a lot, then your cloud operations model will be a, very different. So how do you structure the right operations model in a world that's throwing all of these different terms at you? Now, don't get me wrong, we live in exciting times. It's an exciting time to be in IT. But when you look at structuring cloud operations, you've got terms like platform ops and DevOps and SRE and cloud engineers and cloud center of excellence and all sorts of terms that are thrown at you. Today, we're going to simplify it down to four. Now, any one of the four that you choose, you will obviously have to customize it to meet your organization's specific requirements and culture, but we're going to narrow it down for you to four options that you can choose from. The first option is to use the existing team. Now, when you're using the existing team, it has some pros, but mainly a lot of cons. So when you're using the existing team, you are giving cloud responsibilities to a team that's already probably overworked or at capacity. This team probably doesn't have the right skills, doesn't have the right knowledge on how to operate this environment. And there's a lot of politics and culture that comes into play here. If the existing team doesn't believe in cloud and you're giving them cloud responsibilities, they tend to deprioritize the cloud project. They won't get to it. When you bring it up, it'll be like, well, you know, we'll get to it when we get to it. We're pretty busy. So there's a lot here that comes into play depending on the culture, the opinion of the engineers that you have and whether or not they're willing to support this initiative. So more often than not, customers that choose this type of an approach, it typically will fail. Now, you would choose this approach early on in, the, in your maturity model, right? So if you've just started down the path of cloud, this might be an option that you might pursue. Although again, this approach typically fails because these engineers, these INO engineers that are on-premises engineers, what they will do is they will take everything that they know, everything they've been doing in the data center for the last 30 years plus, and they will implement that in the cloud. The end result of this is typically things that come back, uh, cost overruns. You're bringing applications back because they weren't moved to the cloud properly. Uh, it's usually a very heavy lift and shift type of an operation. There's no optimization of, of any sort. What they're using the cloud for is essentially replacing the on-premises virtualization environment with a cloud-based virtualization environment, and that's it. So there's a lot of cons to this type of approach, it also hinders the progress of your cloud migration. But early on in the process, we have seen customers that choose this type of an approach. This type of approach is also the most cost-effective or the most budget-friendly because you're not hiring anyone new. You're essentially giving cloud responsibilities to the existing team. So if you go down this path, just keep in mind that there's a lot of things that will come into play, factor those in as part of this or this part of this selection and have a plan on how you're going to evolve from this to something else. 
The second option is an expanded team. So what you're doing here is you're taking the existing team and you're opening new recs and you're hiring potentially cloud engineers or cloud architects that would then be responsible for managing your cloud estate. What you're doing here is that you're avoiding trying to figure out if you need to restructure. If you do restructure and you have a separate team, where would that team report into? So what you're doing is you're taking the existing team and simply expanding it. It's not a bad option. It, is, it definitely will buy you time. It's just the dynamic of the team doesn't scale typically very well because now you're, you're intermingling the existing INO teams that have been running data center projects, data centers for a long time with cloud engineers that think differently, that operate differently, and that would need a different type of approach to managing cloud. In the short term, again, based on your cloud maturity, this would certainly work because those cloud engineers, those cloud architects that you are now hiring are going to be able to give you best, best practices and uh, be able to implement and manage the cloud environment very efficiently. They'll also be here, good collaboration, good knowledge transfer. Now, this type of an approach will require new investment in uh, new personnel that you would hire to expand this team. But what you're gaining here is the structure remains the same. You're not changing any kind of reporting structure. Everything remains the same. You're simply expanding this team. Now, this will work well if your maturity model, if you're in the process of maybe doing a lift and shift or maybe a lift shift and some, some level of optimization, this is typically an ideal model for it. We've seen some customers take this approach. Again, this isn't super popular. It's not the, the, the approach that's going to give you the greatest level of success, but I've definitely seen customers that were able to make this work. Option number three, having a separate team. Here it becomes interesting. And this is the approach that works best most of the time. This is what I've seen customers succeed more so than not when they're structuring their cloud operations. In this case, what you're doing is you are creating a new team. This team can be your cloud operations team, let's say. You open new recs for this team. You hire one or two cloud engineers or cloud architects, but you also allow your existing teams to apply for positions within this cloud team. What we're trying to do here is ensure that we're not leaving anyone behind and we're not just hiring new folks for the cloud environment. We're allowing the existing folks that we have, the existing team to have a career advancement. We're creating a career path for them. For those that want to become cloud engineers, for those that want to become cloud architects, we are going to put them in a team that has new cloud engineers and architects, people that have been there, done that, that bring the best practices, that are willing to mentor, that are willing to do that knowledge transfer. And then if someone applies to this, we're going to give them priority over hiring someone new. We will give them the right training, the right certification, and they become part of this new cloud team. And then we'll figure out if we need to backfill for the data center, team that's on-premises or not, depending on how quickly you're going to migrate to cloud, depending on what you're leaving behind. So there's a lot of factors that will come into play here. Now, having this cloud operations team, this is typically very good for, again, based on your maturity model and where you're at, either a lift and shift, lift and shift and optimize would be super ideal for this. And here you can either have this team have a lot of DevOps type of influence, a DevOps mindset, or a very infrastructure focused mindset. Again, here you're going to have variations and these variations will depend on your culture, on your cloud maturity, on the types of applications that you're migrating, on how you're going to interact with developers if you even have developers in the mix. Uh, how much automation you're going to do, how much optimization you're going to do, all of that would factor into this cloud operations team. But customers that have taken this approach have been very successful with it. This is the approach that I would suggest. Now, this will require, again, uh, investment in cloud engineers and cloud architects where you're augmenting the team with these resources that can bring the rest of them along on this cloud journey. Now, having a separate team also means you can now branch out into, again, different maturity models. So you can potentially adopt a platform ops approach. So not necessarily a cloud ops, where cloud ops is more of the traditional approach. This is the IaaS, the PaaS. This is the lift and shift, the lift, shift, and optimize with automation. But the platform ops is when cloud really becomes the product and you're managing it as such, where you have 
dev and ops in the same team and you're adopting a DevOps mindset, but cloud becomes the product and you're managing it in, in that perspective. We will do another video on platform ops separately. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that you'd be interested in seeing. But platform ops is also a separate team. And again, depending on how you're planning on structuring your cloud operations, you may or may not decide to go with platform ops. Your maturity will dictate where you're at and whether you just need a cloud ops or you need to pivot to platform ops. So if you're using a lot of cloud native, if you're using a lot of automation and development uh, practices, agile practices, then you might want to move to a platform ops type of an approach where cloud is the product and you're managing it in terms of services and management as opposed to using it the traditional way uh, with a cloud ops type of mentality or mindset. Option number four, Managed services. Now, managed services will also come in a variety of flavors. Uh, typically, customers that are still starting out, that are early on in their cloud adoption, that aren't sure of how the structure is going to be or how they want to structure their cloud operations, customers that maybe don't have the internal expertise to manage this cloud environment will typically lean towards outsourcing or managed services. Uh, customers that are already outsourced, maybe on-premises, will typically also prioritize using a managed service uh, provider of some sort. And there's a ton of managed services providers out there that are focused on managing your cloud environment. Now, using that, sometimes that could be a temporary thing. You're going to buy yourself some time. You're going to have someone that's going to effectively manage and optimize this environment. Part of that agreement could be that you, you know, that they are responsible for doing a knowledge transfer or training the existing team, or it could be permanent where you've decided that we're just gonna outsource the management of our environment. Now, when you're outsourcing your environment completely, that also comes in a couple of different flavors, depending on, again, what you're trying to do. So if it's simply a, a very IS centric cloud adoption where you're doing a lift and shift or lift and shift and optimize, there's a ton of managed services providers that will, uh, that will help you manage that. And then there are managed services providers that will take a more forward approach, right? Where they're inserting themselves or they're taking over the entire DevOps process where they're interacting with the developers, interacting with the operations. So they become a project manager of some sort as well. So there is that. So when you're dealing with managed services, you can customize it. You can do it in many different uh, flavors. It comes in many different flavors. But the one that we've seen that is the most adopted is early on customers will use a managed services provider because they don't have the internal skill sets or customers that have decided to just simply outsource that because these specialized boutique managed services providers will come in with the right tools. They'll come in with the right mindset, the right best practices. They've been doing it for a long time. They do it for a lot of customers, so they're able to automate and standardize a lot more efficiently. It also buys you a significant amount of time. And when you think of how much time you have to, uh, to put into training your folks, to getting them certified, or maybe to hiring, from a cost perspective, it might be advantageous. So there are a lot of customers that will look at a managed services approach as a very viable approach. Now, managed services, just like anything else, just like outsourcing, it has pros and cons, right? So with managed services or with, with outsourcing, I've seen it where the quality of service just sometimes goes down. So here you have to make sure that you're using the right MSP, that you're setting the right expectations, that you're telling them exactly what you're expecting from them, whether it's support, operations, or all of the above, but be very clear because everything else becomes a change management request. And that can become then, that could add up, that could be costly. So be very clear with the requirements and what you're looking for them to offer you or to provide you as an organization. So what did we cover today? Well, we focused on how to structure your cloud operations model. And we talked about four models. We talked about using the existing team and giving them cloud responsibility. We talked about expanding the team and hiring one or two more folks to help bring the team along. We talked third about having a separate team as a cloud ops team that will do the lift and shift or lift, shift and optimize where you can add automation and a DevOps mindset as well. And or you can you know, pivot to a platform ops type of team as a separate team as well. And then fourth, we talked about the managed services, the outsourcing approach that you can also use as an option to structure your cloud operations. 
I hope this information was very useful and you, you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, share, comment. I'd love to hear what you've used or if I've missed something uh, during this video. 50% plus of you aren't subscribing. So please, if you like this type of content, it'll do me a great favor if you can subscribe, that'll help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I love you all and I will see you in the next one.